Ice Crappers. Tom from the Ice Crap app. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020, and we wish you, your friends, your family, your coworkers, a very healthy day. Here we are in the last couple of days of the first uh, of the fourth month of 2020, and you know we're, we're pushing our way through. We have lots of people that are tackling obstacles that we never thought that would be possible. We have people that are doing things in the healthcare world as well as the, the consumer world of delivering produce, delivering groceries, you know, the, the workers at the grocery stores that are doing their jobs, the truck drivers that are out there doing their jobs, moving material and material doesn't have to be scrap in this case, you know, it could be, you know, foods and, and PPE and health supplies. And we'd like to continue to thank all of the people that are out there doing their job doing their you know their their what their regular job is seems so much bigger than it was in the past you know when we see the idea of essential worker you don't know what am i essential and and so many people that are out there doing their regular day-to-day -day jobs you know that have been underappreciated for years are being put into a spotlight like you had never have before and i think that it's nice to take a couple of minutes to thank people as we always have in any industry that we've worked with we think that working with people and treating them with the level of respect that they deserve which should be the same level of respect that you receive as well so we hope that everyone's doing well out there. We're going to talk about a little bit of scrap updates and then we have a list of questions that we've received over the last couple of weeks that we'd like to answer and discuss for a little while. If you do have comments during these messages, we'll make sure to get to them either during the our live session or next week we'll answer some of those questions as well. If you have more questions during our live feed, feel free to, to, to ask those and like I said, we'll get to them either today or next week. Every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. we like to go live. If you're looking for additional market tips and news, you can always become a Patreon supporter and we'll provide a link there where we have cool updates and tricks and tips, both up and downward trends that are going on in the metals market to share with you throughout the week. So hopefully you can join our Patreon supporting group and you'll be able to go from there. Now we've seen a nice day in the stock market both yesterday and today with the markets rising combined 1,000 points or more. What's important about that is a couple of different things. There's been a couple of pharmaceutical companies that have been working on some really positive drugs and different medications and treatments for the COVID-19 outbreak, which gives a lot of optimism for things to return as the old normal and not the new normal. We think that this is going to change the industry in, in any industry forever, whether it's wearing masks on planes, changing seats, every other seating in hotel, in, excuse me, in stadiums, in movie theaters, and other concert arenas. We think that a lot of things are going to change, but we're hoping that as we rely on the medical industry to continue to develop things that we're able to get back to our old way of normal instead of the new normal with masks gloves and face shields but we think that there will be a lot of good to come out of this as many people are losing people we don't want to lose focus from that because we're not trying to focus on all of the good we're just trying to look at how to move forward as quickly and health and healthy as possible instead of dwelling on where we are today our hearts go out to the families that have lost people. We have people that work for us who have had family members pass away. And it's one of the most sad things to see. You know, so many people across the country that are that have talked about, you know, scrap metal in our group say, I can't believe that scrap yards are closing or shutting down or slowing themselves. You know, the outbreak is contained in so many different places. You know, I'm here in the, the Northeast, 35 miles from New York City, which is considered the epicenter of what's going on. And when you see the nurses and the doctors and, and the, you know, the, the morgues and, and the police and the blue angels flying over, when you see these things happening in your backyard, it changes your perspective so much more. So this is real. This is not something that people are just drumming up. And, you know, hopefully we'll get through this as, as healthy and quickly as possible. Copper is up over the last couple of days. We are, we're seeing prices go up about four cents overall, which is a positive sign. We've seen the oil market stabilize and start to have a little bit of a gain. Some people might ask questions about why oil prices went into the negative dollar amount, and that's because they didn't know when we were going to start consuming it. From information that I've read, the entire world is down 25 million barrels of oil per day. 
So when you have a surplus of 25 million barrels of oil every single day, you have to say, where is it going to go? Well, we've seen countries in the Middle East pulling back 10 million barrels a day of pumping the oil. That helps, but you're still left with excess. While tankers are filling up and floating offshore as oil tanks uh, are filling up as well across the entire world, not only the U.S., as fracking in the United States comes to a slow, as even natural gases there's a gluttony right now. As these things have happened and oil prices went down, that's why you saw some prices of oil being negative because some people were willing to you know, take on negative dollar amounts for oil to be able to buy this stuff if they had areas to store it. Now, if, if you were me or I were you, I would wish I had a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand gallon you know, tank that I could put a bunch of gas in and be able to have inexpensive gas or diesel for the next few months. But whoever expects to be doing something like that and having it waiting, sure, you could fill up a couple of red buckets and put them in your car. But if your car has a tank of 15 to 20 gallons and you only have 10 gallons worth of storage, you're not saving that much extra money. But it's something that some people you know, want to ask questions questions on so it's something to look at. We have seen the steel prices stabilize up roughly seven to ten dollars over the last week which is also a positive sign and we've started to see different economies throughout the country beginning to reopen. Things that we suggest you do when you're going to your scrapyards, you might want to call ahead, see what some of their health requirements are. Here in New Jersey, we require our customers come in wearing masks, and if they don't wear them, we turn them away because we're not looking to make anyone uncomfortable, especially the team members that work for us or other customers that are in the area. So you might want to reach out to your local scrapyard, check out their website, or give them a call just to see what health alerts that you might need to know about. We've heard about some scrapyards only accepting material from people that will throw it into the pile, not buying non-ferrous for a short time, scrapyards closing early due to health and cleansing after the work uh, flow is done. Some scrapyards are opening earlier to allow employees to clean the areas. Here in Rockaway, New Jersey, at our yard, we've been cleaning throughout the day and we close 30 minutes early every day to make sure that everything that we work with is cleaned. We're in a good position for the next morning, throwing out old face masks, gloves, op emptying garbages. So you just don't know what your scrapyard is going to do. So we advise reaching out to them so you can see what their methods are. While we're in some times, we have heard of some scrapyards stopping cash payments and only issuing checks. So you also might want to reach out to your yards about information like that as well. Now I'd like to go into some of the questions that we've been asked over the last few weeks and we appreciate everyone asking these questions and if you have follow-ups for them, feel free to ask and we'll either answer them live or get to you in the next day or two or we'll take your question and we'll bring it to our next week's meeting. Joe asked us, why is it so fine, so hard to find a nichrome buyer? Now, nichrome is a nickel chromium mixture, which is used in different fields and is not a common metal like copper, aluminum, or brass. So when you have something that isn't common, like a copper, aluminum, brass, or an ABC, aluminum, brass, and copper, you're going to have to find a specialty buyer because your scrapyard might buy it relatively cheap. They might group it into their steel prices, or depending on what the metal is, whether it's Inconel, Monel, or something else, they might not have a real market for that. As we know, especially right now, these high temperature alloys are very hard to move, so you have to really just be in a wait and see mode for the time being. Thank you for the question. Dion, do scrapyards buy laptops as computer towers? Laptops should be worth more money than computer towers, at least two to three times the price, but we recommend you call the scrapyard or e-recycler e that you're selling to and see what they want you to do with the lithium ion batteries. As some laptops have them built in, some can have them pop out easily, but you're going to want to know. But the motherboard that is inside that laptop is going to be more condensed, which means you're going to have more circuits, more gold, more precious metals in a smaller area to make sure that, that laptop is continuing to work at a faster speed. So that gives you a better idea on where the market will be for laptops versus computer towers, which generally have a little more air. The circuits could be bigger. You have power supplies that are much larger, hard drives that are larger. So when you take a laptop and, you know, you have a computer tower that's this big, right? 
and then you have a, a laptop that's this big, you gotta figure all the stuff in that computer tower has to shrink its way down to fit in that laptop, A, which is why they're generally worth, uh, cost more money, B, they're worth more money when you go to scrap them. Bob asked us, do scrapyards buy tantalum? If not, why? Well, this goes to the first question. Some scrapyards don't have a market for tantalum, and many scrapyards do buy it, including ours here in Rockaway, New Jersey. We buy tantalum, and we have a good outlet for it, but it is a specialty metal that's used in multiple fields. Some could be medical related, some could be in very high end electronics, but if you don't have a good buyer for the tantalum, then it's gonna be very difficult to buy it from customers. And if you're dealing with tantalum, you might wanna call your scrapyard ahead of time, send them pictures of what type you have, as there could be different grades like air melt, vac, solids, and other things alike. We've seen tantalum over the years that come in little buttons, we've seen tantalum that look like sponges, we've seen tantalum that comes in flake form, lots of different types. Uh, tantalum chips can also be found in electronics as well. Mike asked us, with insulated wire prices so low, can you give me some more information on separating wire for more profit? Not the easy stuff like Romex, more about the smaller wires. Mike, great question, and we have multiple blogs and videos that we've talked about separating wire in the past, but I'll give you a quick 101. There are different grades of wire, and let's talk about everything that's kind of below a fire wire or Romex mix. Wire that you can take, bend easily, and it stays stiff, that generally means that there's more copper inside that. The wires that are really easy to bend, the computer wires, extension cords, generally have more insulation and you're going to want to do a cross cut to see how many pieces of copper are inside. Now something like an extension cord will probably refine around 20 to 30 percent copper, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, plus or minus 5 percent, all depending on what application it was used for, if it's 110 or a stronger voltage. So those are things that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to as well. But we have some really great blogs that'll give you a little better idea on how your copper separation should go. Cat5 versus Cat6, Cat5 cross, uh, computer wire, lower grades of wire that come out of computers, maybe ribbon wire. All of these are different grades that we talk about extensively. Thank you for the question. Steven asked us, What's, what gauge of wire does it have to be to count as bare bright? If it's too small as a gauge, will it automatically be as bare bright or like a number one tubing? So this is a very interesting question that we've had hundreds of times over the years, both at the scrapyard and through iScrap. Generally, we tell people like a 10 gauge or a 12 gauge wire is kind of the, the bare bones minimum to qualify as bare bright. If you strip something like a electrical uh, cord or extension cord, you're gonna get that copper out of there and yes, it's gonna look like it's bare bright, but it's extremely thin and it's called number one hair wire or hair wire. We generally buy that as a number one tubing, but oftentimes that thin, thin mixture could be shellacked or coated and could be bought as a number two. So you're gonna to wanna to reach out to your local scrapyard, see what their requirements are. As some scrapyards tend to be more lenient, but the ones that really know what they're doing have learned over the years that that hair wire is generally not gonna go as a bear bright. As it goes in the furnace, it gets quickly uh, uh, heated up, and sometimes some of that copper can get lost as smoke going up, and that's one of the reasons why it is not bought as a bear bright. Justin has a very long question that I'm gonna take a, a minute to read here, so I just want everyone to be prepared. When prices dropped for steel recently, many yards dropped many non-ferrous categories as well, but the wholesale prices from their buyers stayed roughly the same on most things, excluding copper. Is this more of a hedge against potential price drops in the future or to compensate for lower customer and st higher steel volume income by shifting the margins to try to keep the income as stable as possible? Now, Justin, that is a very complex and very well-worded question that I'd love to attack. I think the easy answer is yes. When different markets go down very abruptly, some buyers, some scrap yards or larger processors, will drop most of their margins across the board to be able to offset for larger price decreases and try to make up for some of those larger drops. 
Now, different scrapyards do things different ways. We know yards that sell and the material within two to three days, so they don't have much material on hand and they're never really waiting. We know other yards that have a, a month end clean out. They shut down for one to two days. They completely empty their yard. They move what they move. They figure out how they did for the month. And the prices that they had for the month will normally dictate how they move forward into the next month. So these are things that you have to look for as well. When crazy times like this, these pandemic errors happen, most scrapyards will swiftly pull back their prices because they don't know when the markets are going to recover or where they're going to go next. So they'll pull their prices back 15, 20 cents more than they should normally be because you don't know where the drops are going to come until things kind of stabilize. I've said over the last few weeks, we're going to know when we start to make the corner, make the turn around where we are with this pandemic. And I believe that we're right at the corner making that turn right now with some of the social distancing practices becoming more day to day with more of the doctors and the researchers finding different vaccinations and starting to work on different cures for these things. So we're starting to make that turn. You're starting to see states slowly reopening, following the national government's you know, three-phased approach, two weeks per phase or more if needed. And we're starting to see a lot of the cases getting reported going down as we have unfortunately seen the death rate kind of stay where it is because the death rate, what we've seen is it's a, a 12 to 14 day cycle. So while the cases are going down, the people who were diagnosed 10, 12 days ago, unfortunately, many of them are passing away today. So it's something that you have to look for. So go back to the original question, and I don't mean to di d divert ourselves, the scrapyards have to protect themselves. So sometimes dropping everything across the board, even if copper hasn't moved, aluminum or stainless, you have to think that the domino effect is gonna be very difficult to figure out. As scrapyards sell their material, there are consumers that are not buying right now. So scrapyards might be forced to sit on materials or sell to other people for a much cheaper rate just to be able to continue to move material. So these are very interesting factors to watch as well. Pedro asked, do you think with this second wave of the virus coming in November that the markets are going to stay low? Well, I, I tend to be an optimist, Pedro, and I hope that we don't have a second wave, although reality says that we most likely will. But what we will know by then is how to deal with it. I know that the ventilator situation will be handled. There will be more PPE. Hopefully more manufacturing jobs will be moved back to the United States so we won't have to rely on shipping things in from overseas such as masks, gowns, or gloves. And hopefully if and when there is a second wave, if we're talking five or six months from now, some researchers are saying that the way that the government and all the healthcare industries are attacking this virus, there's actually a chance that we start to have vaccinations by the end of 2020, opposed to the, to, to the traditional 10 to 15 month window that it takes for most flu vaccinations to get developed and implemented for the following flu seasons. So we're hoping that we don't have that second wave, but if we do, I think that the entire economy and government, local governments, and people themselves are not gonna be as shocked as we were this first time, and it's gonna be contained much quicker, more rapidly, and in a much more efficient way. Bradley asked us, when people are hoarding their scrap metals in times like these, why don't pr prices go up to get people to sell? Well, right now in times like these, Bradley, it's unlike things that we've seen in the past. One thing which I mentioned a couple of minutes ago is where people are going to sell their materials to right now. Right now you have market demand, which isn't really where it should be because so many factories have either shut down are changing their operations. We have friends that work in factories where there's normally three or four people in one area. Now there's one person. 
You heard, you know, I read an article yesterday about Volkswagen out in Germany opening up one of their plants again, but only operating at 10 to 15 percent capacity. So when you have these things happening at a much slower rate, cars aren't being manufactured as fast. I heard Apple the other day that they might be delaying the mass production of their next line of iPhones. And this is going to happen throughout multiple technology sectors, multiple auto sectors. And you have to figure that the housing markets are going to slow down. The factories that are being built are going to slow down. We're going to see a six month lag time really picking things up. So if you listen to some of the economists, and the, the economic advisors throughout the United States, they do think that this is not going to be kind of an L curve where people are talking about it going down and flatlining. They're talking about it being more of a, a UV type of a curve where we had very sharp decline. And then we're going to have a little slow spot to start to arch our way back up. So instead of having that nice rounded U, you might have a, a little bit of a, a sharp V down like we did, and then maybe a slow you know, U shape up. So it'll be a, a hybrid V U combined. I don't know, you do it with your fingers, right? It kind of looks like that. So we're hoping that that is what we see and then that manufacturing starts to pick itself up you know you got to figure if people are if 25 million people are at home unemployed they're not going to be buying new cars used cars new tvs new phones new electronics a lot of those things that they were going to be buying regularly whether they plan to buy them or just kind of had a spur of the moment thing their day-to-day -day expenses are going to be way more important than their want expenses groceries are going to be more important than their wanting a new phone you know if your phone is working why do you need the iphone 112 or whatever model is out there coming out so you might want to be, you know be paying your utilities your mortgage your rent your car payments your cell phone bill opposed to upgrading things that you have so you might see the second half of this year a lot of consumer products like cars phones, electronics, not only will the holidays be there, but there might be such a hangover and such a domino effect from the slowdown the first six Sorry. There might be real buying opportunities that come out of this for people to be able to go out get new products, get new things at deeply discounted rates where some manufacturers and producers, they'll be more excited to just sell those goods for either a, a small profit or a baseline break even instead of making their traditional 20, 30, 40%. Same thing is going to go for clothing. You know, clothing companies that are traditionally making all types of things and they have their, their winter and their spring and their summer and their fall, you know, they have these things lined up. They're going to have a lot of products, so you're going to see a lot of sales. You're going to see a lot of things pushed out. You're going to see a, maybe less of a selection going into the fall as people are recovering. So a lot of these things are going to really take shape as the year goes on. So again, we thank you for the question. Just to give a recap, we want to thank all the healthcare workers. We want to thank all the frontline first responders, the truckers, the grocery store workers, the essential workers that are keeping this economy moving at the slower pace that we're at, but still not a pace that stopped. We hope and pray that the, the economy uh, continues to improve, that the health of so many people impacted by this continues to improve, that the doctors that are out there are able to find vaccinations as quickly as possible, and that we're able to move forward with this and get past it and not forget about it, but be able to learn, grow, and hopefully never experience something like this again. This is Tom from the iScrap app, and every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m., we'd like to do our live weekly report. So if you have questions that we didn't answer during this report, we'll either get to you this afternoon or we'll address them next week during our live session. We appreciate you tuning in. We ask you to continue to stay healthy. We look forward to, to reading your comments, answering them, writing more information for you. And until next week, scrappers, we'll scrap you later.